So we are now in chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7. We're going to uh, start reading. Uh, could somebody read for us the first four verses, please? Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. Okay, Revelation 7, 1 through 4. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of the of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of the, all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Mm. So, thank you. So we're seeing that there is a time of great calm. So these four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding back the winds uh, that shouldn't blow on the earth to disturb the tree or the sea or anything on the earth is uh, symbolic for us, a symbolic of a time of great calm, right? The winds uh, are like, uh, uh, I'm representing turbulence, things happening. So there is a, there's a period of calm, quiet. And then there's an angel who, verse, verse 2, um, who, who, who comes from the east. And this angel uh, has the power to cause harm. But the instruction is, don't do anything. That means let, let this period of calm continue until we have marked out these 144,000 Jewish people. That means God is going to call forth these 144,000 Jews uh, from all over the earth, right? And they belong to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That means they are sealed, they are marked out by God. They are, the call of God is put upon their lives. And now, uh, how they are sealed, uh, we know in the New Testament, there are two things that are used to seal people. That is the whole presence of the Holy Spirit and the name of the Lord God. So we today, as New Testament believers, uh, we are sealed with the presence of the Holy Spirit and by the name of our God. Right? Similarly, these people, these 144,000 Jews, uh, would be sealed by God, by giving them both the Holy Spirit and the name of the Lord being put upon their lives, they will be called by God. Um, uh, it does not mean that these 144,000 Jews have to be in Israel. They could be anywhere in the world, but they belong to the 12 tribes uh, um, of Israel. Now, uh, uh, what is interesting in verses 5 through 8 of Revelation chapter 7, verses 5 through 8, um, uh, when in, in, in mentioning the names of the 12 tribes, um, two of the tribes uh, have been left out. The names of two of the tribes have been left out. And instead of putting their names, the tribe of Dan and uh, Ephraim, uh, uh, it's replaced by uh, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph uh, and uh, Manasseh. Uh, so, uh, so. Uh, that's, uh, you know, in, in so specifically mentioning Dan and Ephraim, uh, it's replaced by Joseph and Manasseh. Uh, so again, there's, you know, there's, uh, in, in some commentaries, there will be this discussion on why those names were left out and replaced by Joseph and Manasseh. Uh, now Joseph, uh, but eventually, you know, you're, you're covering all the 12 tribes, but in so specifically naming Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph, is put in there, uh, Joseph, uh, who was the father of 
uh, 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 Ephraim and Manasseh, the two tribes. He, his name is put in there. And, uh, and uh, uh, Dan, uh, 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 instead of Dan, uh, just the tribe of Manasseh uh, is mentioned there. So uh, why would that happen? And there's, there's a lot of you know discussion. And uh, the, the, um, the common um, part is, again, this is just, you know, based on Bible study, people come up with uh, the most logical uh, reason uh, is that because of the tribe of Dan and Ephraim, that they, you know, maybe they, they, they went away from God or they refused to fight for Israel or um, for the nation. Uh, and so on. So and there are various reasons why people would try to explain why their names were left. You know, uh, uh, so why specifically Dan and Ephraim were left? There could be, you know, different reasons that people present. Now uh, we don't have to worry about it, other than the fact that all the twelve tribes are covered, but the name of Joseph and Manasseh is mentioned uh, in Strap Dan and Ephraim. Now, so what we are seeing is these 144,000 Jews have been marked. Now, obviously, they are marked for a reason. They are marked for an assignment. It's not just for, for fun. Uh, their assignment is to be proclaimers, to bear testimony to the word of God and to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And they're empowered by the Holy Spirit uh, to do that. And we will see later on in chapter 14 uh, a testimony to their life during the tribulation. We will see that. Uh, tribulation 14 looks back and says this is how they lived. But these 144,000 Jewish men have been marked by God around the world and they're bearing testimony to the word of God and to the name of Jesus Christ. So the gospel is being preached, uh, is being proclaimed even during the tribulation. Then what we are seeing is while this is going on, or while these 140,000 Jews are being raised up, we now see once again a great multitude who have come into the presence of God. So the scene, the, our, our view goes from, you know, this what's happening here on earth, 144,000 Jews being marked out for God's purpose, to heaven, where we are seeing a great multitude of people. And who are these multitude of people? These are people who've come through the tribulation. That means we are seeing some more people who have been killed during the tribulation. Remember, we saw in Revelation 6, in the fifth seal, that many more people are going to be killed. And they're going to obviously, you know, their souls are going to come up before the presence of God. And they're going to be clothed in white robes, just like what we saw in Revelation 6, 9, that uh, the when, when people are killed on the earth, they're martyred on the earth for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Spiritually, their spiritual persons come. Uh, before the presence of God, and they clothed by tropes. So we're going to see one more scene of that in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. And these people are standing before the throne, and they're worshipping God. That means more lives, more people are being martyred, and they are seen up in heaven. So let's read that. This is Revelation 7, 9 uh, through 17. The worship of the martyred saints taking place in heaven. Revelation chapter 7, 9 through 17, please. Dave, would you want to read it? Or Aaron? After this, I looked, and there was an enormous crowd. No one could count. All the people, they were from every race, tribe, nation, and language, and they stood in front of the throne, and, and all the lamb dressed in white robes and holding palm branches and their hands. They call out a loud, in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God, who sits on the throne. And from the lamb, all the angels stood round the throne, and, and the elders and the four living creatures, then they threw themselves face down 
downwards in front of the throne and worship God saying, Amen, praise, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might belongs to God forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders asks me, who, who, are these thing, who are these people dressed in white robe and where do they come from? I don't know, sir. You do? I answer. He said to me, these are the people who have come safely through the terrible persecution. They have washed their robe and made them white with the blood of the Lamb. That is why they stand before God's throne and serve him day and night in his temple. He who sits on the throne will protect them with his presence. Never again will they hunger or thirst, neither sun nor any scorching, scorching heat will burn mm -hmm. them, because the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the spring of living, of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tears from their eyes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, John sees this great multitude once again. And this time he's seeing people from all over the world, from every tribe, tongue, people, language. So, you know, he's, he's getting a sense of, wow, there are people here from just everywhere. They're standing before the throne. And they are clothed in white robes. So just keep this in mind. Clothed in white robes, that's very special for the saints. Right? We saw that earlier, the, the martyred saints in Revelation 6, 9, they were given white robes. Right? So here again, these are clothed in white robes. And they're standing for the throne. They're worshiping God. They are singing salvation belongs to the Lord. And the angels and everyone else is joining in this worship before God. And so, you know, one of the elders asks, you know, do you know who these people are? Who are they? And uh, uh, John says, I don't know. And the elder explains to him, these are the people who've come out through the great tribulation. Right? So we are saying that these, now it doesn't state it here in the text, but it, it's safe to conclude that these are people who've been martyred during the tribulation. Why? Because the whole tribulation period has, is not yet over. It's going on. So these are saints who have been martyred during the tribulation. And they are come up in the presence of God. They're clothed in white robes. And they're worshiping God. And the promise to them is, I will wipe away all tears. So again, you know, the, the, the reason that promise is given is because they have endured so much. They've gone through so much. They've suffered and they've even died for the name of Christ. And so there's this promise that you're, they're going to be, uh, they're going to sit on the throne. They're going to, uh, they're, they're going to, uh, 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 they will be before the throne of God. They will worship the Lord. They will neither hunger nor thirst anymore. They're not experience any of these hardships which they experienced while here on earth. God will wipe away all the tears. And so that's what we are saying, you know, because of, based on the context of what is given as a promise, uh, that uh, these are people who most likely have suffered so much during the tribulation, died for their faith, and they are there before the presence of God worshiping, right? So chapter 7 is like an in-between uh, chapter. It's like an interjecting the whole sequence of things that are happening. The sixth seal is over. Seventh seal is going to take place. Uh, but in between, uh, uh, John gets this uh, uh, insight into 144,000 Jews who are set apart by God to serve him during the tribulation. And he sees these great multitudes of people of who, are, you know, who are coming out of the tribulation. They are in the presence of God out of every tribe, tongue, and nation. That means people from all over the world are going to believe in Christ during the tribulation. They're going to die for their faith during the tribulation. And they are going to be, you know, come up with the presence of God, uh, clothed in white robes and worshiping God. 
So re remember, these things are happening in the during the tribulation and literally in the first half of the tribulation because we haven't reached chapter 11 yet, right? So it's just the beginning now when all these things are happening. Now we get into chapter 8 where uh, we now you know, read about the seventh seal and then that leads us into the seven trumpets, right? So the seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. So the seventh seal, uh, this is in Revelation chapter 8, and um, uh, let's read verses 1 through 6, please. Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. So we're going to transition from the seven seals into the seven trumpets, what happens then during that time? Somebody could read Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 6 for us, please. All right. And now, Kanan Siddharth. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came birds, and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and earthquakes, the trumpets. And the seven angels who had seven trumpets prepared to sound them. Hmm. Thank you. So, what do we see here? The seventh seal is just a moment of silence. It's a continuation of this calm that we read in uh, chapter 7. So remember at the beginning of chapter 7, the angel says, okay, don't do anything. Hold back the winds. Let they be calm. There are certain things that need to be done. What is it? Mark out the 144,000 Jews. Um, and we are seeing, you know, souls up in heaven worshiping God. So chapter 8, seventh seal, silence, quietness. But it's, an indica it's a time of transition. What's happening? We're going to get ready for the seven trumpets. So that's Revelation 8 2, the seven angels for the seven trumpets. They come and they stand. But at this time, what we are seeing is there's a great prayer and intercession happening from the earth. Because we are seeing that there is uh, this angel. Uh, who has, uh, this is verse 3, Revelation 8 verse 3, he has this golden censer and uh, he's having a lot of incense. And uh, there are the prayers of the saints that are coming up before the throne, the golden altar before the throne. So what we, have, obviously these are the prayers of the saints who are on the earth. And the prayers are coming up before God. And this angel has been given this incense. It's just showing us, it's representing to us a lot of prayer that's happening. The prayers of the saints ascending uh, before God. So, therefore, what we can say is that at this point in the tribulation, there's going to be a uh, a great prayer movement. Sometimes you might hear it referred to as a global prayer movement. This is happening in the tribulation. Obviously, when people are seeing all these, you know, things happening, there will be many who turn to God. It doesn't mean that everybody will turn to God, but there will be many who turn to God. And the only thing they can do is pray. Why? Because it's so difficult. It's so difficult to follow Christ. Like we've already seen, people are being killed for the word of God and their testimony. They're being martyred. 
and more people are going to be killed. So it's going to be very difficult. And the only thing people can do, those who turn to the Lord in those days, is they can just pray. And that's what Revelation 8, verses 1 through 6, we are seeing this lots of prayer, prayer ascending before the throne of God. And the angel is throwing the censer to the earth, meaning he is igniting this prayer movement. You know, there's something from heaven that is igniting this prayer or encouraging this prayer or supporting this prayer movement on the earth. People are praying, crying out to God because it's not going, it's not going to be easy. So that's another thing we are seeing happen during the tribulation. And remember, we haven't even reached the middle of the tribulation yet. This is all happening in the first part of the tribulation. Revelation 11 will be the transition point when we are crossing into the second half of the tribulation. This is all in the first part. First three and a half years. The next thing that we see happen is the seven angels are ready to sound the seven trumpets. So one by one, these seven trumpets are sounded. And similar to what happened with the seven seals, or with the six seals, first six of them, uh, whenever an, a trumpet is sounded, something is happening here on earth. And uh, there is the wrath of God, there is the judgment of God being poured out on the earth. Right. So let's look at them one by one. Let's uh, read Revelation chapter 8, verses 7 through 11. We will read about the first three trumpets. Right, Revelation chapter 8, 7 through 11. Somebody could read that for us, please. Revelation chapter 8, 7 through 11. Karan, if your mic is fine, you can read it. Otherwise, uh, may I call upon Dave to read? Okay, maybe Dave, you should read. I think maybe Karan's mic is not okay. Uh, give me some time, sir, Pastor. My oh, okay. Bible is wrapping up. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll All right. Okay, Revelation chapter 8, verses 7 through 11. Maybe, um, uh, Prince, if you can read, if it's possible. Or, or if Dave can get it. Or can get it. Okay. Go ahead. The first angels sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grasses were burned up. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning from burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the water waters became Wormwood and many men died from the, from the water because it was made bitter. Mm, thank you. So, as the trump, trumpet judgments are being sounded, things are happening on the earth. So when the first trumpet sounds, one third of the earth's vegetation is burned up, right? So um, the trees, one third of all the trees and the grass, so earth's vegetation is destroyed. A third, 30% uh, of, or 33% of the earth's vegetation is destroyed. And it's destroyed by hail and fire. So different parts of the world are experiencing these things, hail and fire, and it's destroying the vegetation. Second angel, um, so John is seeing, he's seeing a great mountain burning with fire. So when you think about a great mountain burning with fire, a mountain with fire 
what does that look like for us? A mountain that's throwing fire into the sea. Uh, what what does that what does that picture to you? Right to most of us, that would seem like a volcano. Right, a mountain that's throwing out fire seem like a volcano. So could be could be uh, you know volcanic eruptions. But anyway, John sees like a mountain burning with fire, it's throwing fire into the sea. It's all and it's destroying life in the sea, it's destroying sea creatures, it's destroying ships. So life in the sea is being destroyed. Now remember we we do depend a lot on you know the sea for food and other things. Yeah? And it's it's there's that much destruction there. The third trumpet is causing destruction of the drinking water. Springs and rivers um, are affected and the water is turning bitter and uh, and uh, can't drink it anymore. So really life on earth, the vegetation, life in the sea, water that we drink is all being affected, you know. And 30% uh, um, saying over and over again, 30% of all of these things uh, is, is, is affected. And uh, it's not gonna be easy. And when you know things like this is happening, already we've seen so many things happen under the seals, seal judgments. Now the trumpet judgments are beginning to affect life, make it even more difficult. The fourth trumpet we will read verses 12 to 13, Revelation 8, 12 to 13. Uh, somebody could read this, please. Yeah. Then the fourth angel sounded, and the third uh, of the sun was struck, a third of moon of the moon, and a third of the star, so that a third of them were drunken. A third of the day did not sign and likewise the night and i looked uh, and i looked and i heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remain of of the trumpet of the three angels who are about the sound about to sound mm, thank you so this fourth trumpet is once again, just like what we saw in Revelation chapter six, once again, the sun, the stars, the moon are affected. And uh, it's cutting off the heat and the light that the earth needs. So I can imagine, you know, how life on earth is going to be affected. If uh, today everything, you know, under, under normal conditions, everything is held in a balance. We get the, just the right amount of light and heat. From the sun, there is the right balance of day and night. But then when that is disrupted, and it says here a third of the sun, that means imagine if 30% of the heat and the light is taken off it's going to be terrible right so um and that's what it's saying here in verse 12 that the stars the sun is darkened and they did not shine now we don't know for how long whether it's just you know a, a short period of time or what duration this is but it's going to affect life on earth terribly and then there's an angel that says, you know, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the next three trumpets are going to be worse than these first four. The judgments that come on the earth, when the next three trumpets sound, are going to be worse than the first four trumpets that have already sounded. So it's like, get ready for worse things. So then we come into chapter 9, 
and we read about the fifth trumpet, right? The fifth trumpet uh, being sounded and uh, what do we see happen? It's a rather lengthy passage, Revelation chapter nine, and we have to read verses one through 12 to get an understanding of what happens when the fifth trumpet sounded, but the angel has warned us, hey, this is going to be worse than the first four, right? So let's just look at it, Revelation nine, Verses 1 through 12. Somebody could read that for us, please. Revelation 9, 1 through 12, please. Can I read? Yes, go ahead, Conan. Yeah. Uh, then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven on the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and uh, smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek uh, death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. them. The shape of the locusts was like horse, horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their face, faces were like the faces of men. Uh, they had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had a breastplate like breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle they had tails like scorpions and there were uh, stings in their tails their power was to hurt men for uh, five months and they had a had as king over them the angel of the bottom was pit those who in Hebrew in uh, Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One who, one who uh, is past, behold, still two more posts were uh, coming after these things. Mm, thank you. So the fifth trumpet sounds. So there is an angelic being was released on the earth who opens up the bottomless pit, meaning there's a release of demonic spirits on the earth. So the locusts here are, are representing these demonic beings um, that, uh, that are released on the earth and they have power like scorpions. That means they are very painful and destructive in what they're doing. And they are tormenting people on the earth for five months. But they cannot affect the pe these men who have the seal of God on their foreheads. Right? So it's not affecting the 144,000 Jewish men. But these, uh, these beings are, are, are troubling men so much that men want to die. They want to just end their lives. But they're not able to do it. So it's a very difficult situation. Right? They're being tormented. People are being tormented uh, by these demonic powers for five months. Uh, and uh, they want to die, but they just cannot. Now, um, John describes what he's seeing, verses 7 through 10. Uh, and, you know, uh, what are these, these beings like? Uh, now, we don't know if uh, if what he was seeing, you know, when he describes these these locusts, he refers to them as locusts. So we can imagine, you know, locusts, they look 
almost like grasshopper looking type uh, creatures. But they're actually empowered, demon, empowered by demonic spirits. So they could either, could either just represent demonic spirits or some physical thing that is being used by demonic spirits. But John is describing what he's saying, these locusts that he's saying. So uh, it's very likely that there are, there are some things that are being used by these spirits that have been released from the bottomless pit uh, to trouble man. Uh, and I, it, it's very hard to uh, determine from what John has described here what this could be. Uh, uh, so you know, we just just anything, any anything that we would arrive at could be just speculation, could be just guess. But we, we will just leave it at that. That that there are these certain creatures or things that are being used by these demonic spirits to hurt men and trouble men for five months. And this whole thing that's being happening on the earth is actually being led by the angel of the bottomless pit. That means it is, this is like the, a heightened demonic activity on the earth, which is troubling men. And it could be through some sort of a thing or a creature, whatever that is on the earth. Meaning these, these creatures that John is saying, locust-like things. But the real power behind all of that is demonic power. Now, keep this in mind because when we come to Revelation chapter 19, once again we will see demonic forces released on the earth in a different way. This is when we come to the bold judgments. So those demonic powers will actually cause uh, nations to come against each other. They will be released on the earth to go and instigate the heads of nations to come into the battle of Armageddon. So what we are saying is, during the tribulation, both during the trumpet judgments, as well as during the bold judgments, there is increased demonic activity on the earth that is troubling people, causing people to, to, you know, to suffer. And the height of all of this, what we will see later on, is in chapter 13, when the beast and the false prophet, that is, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Satan directly is empowering them. They are empowered by the dragon, that is Satan, to cause harm upon the human race, to take control of people's lives. So you, we put all this together and we say that during the tribulation, while there are other things happening in, in, in nature, uh, uh, you know, calamities happening, vegetation being destroyed, water being affected, the seas being affected, there are volcanic eruptions, all of those things are happening. The sun is being darkened, the moon is turning blood red, and all those things are happening. There is also an unleash of demonic activity on the earth that are troubling people's lives like never before. So that's what the sixth, sorry, the fifth angel has uh, you know, announced, and this is what's happening on the earth. Demonic powers troubling people on the earth for, the, for this five months. But then he says, you know, the next two are going to be even worse. So when the sixth trumpet is sounded, again, there is a release of demonic powers, and they are affecting people on the earth in a very, very significant way. So let us read Revelation chapter 9, 
verses 13 to 21, please. Revelation 9, 13 to 21. Somebody could read that for us, please. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horse in a vision. Those who sat on them had bracelets of fiery red, hyacinth blue and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horse were like the heads of lion, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of man was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of the man, rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of, of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their um, sorceries or their sexual immoralities or their thefts. Mm. So, once again, when the sixth trumpet sounded, and angels are released from the river Euphrates, and they, they go, their assignment is to kill a third of mankind. So, um, it seems here that there are these angels who have been assigned in this territory and uh, they go about, they, they're, uh, they have been assigned in this territory around the river Euphrates or at the great U U U river Euphrates and they are released to destroy one third of mankind. Now, it is not very clear here that, you know, uh, how all this happens, but it seems like there is a human army. It could be understood as a um, literal army of people of 200 million. This is in verse 16, 200 million. And they are going about destroying the lives of people. And he's mentioning, uh, John is seeing actually what's happening because there is fiery red, blue, sulfur yellow, fire, smoke, and brimstone that is uh, coming out from these 200 million uh, horsemen, army of the horsemen, a movement of uh, uh, this army. And uh, and also these 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 horses are looking very different, right? This this is there's some sort of a metallic, you know, they have breastplates and faces like lions and so on and so forth, and there is um, fire and smoke and brimstone coming out. So is John seeing spiritual beings that are very destructive in their nature? that have been released on the earth, that could be one. Or could this 200 million be a human army that is going about destroying lives? Um, but what is very really clear is in verse 18, he says, people are destroyed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone. So it seems 
to me, and again, I'm, I'm only saying it seems because we are not, we don't know for sure that this is talking about, you know, uh, the kind of battle of warfare that could happen in our day and time. You know, back in old times, people fought with swords and shields and spears and fire and smoke and brimstone was not part of, you know, weapons of destruction or battles. At the most, they would, you know, shoot uh, arrowheads with fire. But today, battles are very different. It's fire, smoke and brimstone. You know, it's basically when you drop bombs, uh, missiles, uh, tanks that, you know, and all the kinds of weapons that, that are used in bat warfare today are like this. They, you know, they cause these kinds of things to happen. So if this army of 200 million that, that John saw it could be a literal army of people who are going about killing, destroying. Right? This is when the sixth angel sounds. Or if it is all just uh, a spiritual in nature, it could be these demonic spirits that have been released. My feeling, this again, this is my personal thought, it seems more likely to be a natural army of 200 million people, uh, uh, you know, uh, army that's, that's that's going about being very destructive at that point in time. Okay, that's my feeling because it's, it's, he's talking about fire, smoke, and brimstone and uh, uh, one-third uh, or 30% of mankind was killed. Okay? So most likely it's uh, some huge army. Uh, some of the countries that have uh, capacity for this kind of army, of course, is China. They have a standing army, yeah, I think, of over 200 million soldiers. Uh, so, or at least it could be a combination of nations, possibly, uh, who have a standing army of such a large standing army uh, that could move around and cause destruction. Now, just to close off, verses 20 to 21, while all this is happening, there's another side to all of this, that is, people don't repent. So on the one side, we said there are people who are dying for their faith, who are turning to God in prayer. There are these 144,000 Jews who are bearing witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. But then on the other side, there are people, it says here, the rest of mankind, they did not repent. Though they were seeing all these things, they hardened their hearts, and they continued to do in their sinful ways. They did not turn to God. So that's the other side of what's happening. Right? So the judgments of God are being poured out. Uh, people are recognizing that this is very unusual. This is not normal. And, uh, and yet uh, there are people who refuse to repent. And they continue on in their sinful ways. Okay, so we've come to the end of chapter 9. Next week, uh, we will pick up with uh, chapter 10 and uh, move forward. You know, and, and as we look at all these things, uh, we say, you know, a lot of these things that we are seeing, um, that we are reading, could definitely be fulfilled in our day and time. You know, especially when you talk about an army of 200 million, if that was actually a physical army that's going about killing with smoke and fire and brimstone, that seems like much like a modern day warfare battle uh, with, uh, with the kind of equipment uh, that, that equipment that, that's available today for battle. Seems very much like today's times, okay? All right, so we're going to pause here. We will pray and dismiss, um, and uh, we will continue this next week. Uh, just an announcement that, uh, that we will not be having the next class on media and technology. I'm just taking a break. Uh, we'll continue that uh, next week as well. We will complete all our portions in that area, in that subject. Uh, so there won't be class uh, on media and technology. And I've, I've put a note in that class as well. Okay. I want to invite somebody to pray with us and we will close. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, 
Uh, Kiran, would you like to pray? And we will close. Sorry. Yes, sir. Father God, we come before your throne. Father God, once again, we want to say thanking you, Father God, thank you, God, your, your grace and mercy, Father God. Thanking you, Father God. And once again, we are just praying for that all people, Father God, just open their eyes, Father God, that they can understand, they can receive you, Father God. And they can repent, Father God, help them, Father God, raise your people, Father God, raise intercessor, Father God, that, that, that day, Father God, Father God, all things are meeting to your hand, Father God, now time give, give your peace and comfort, Father God, to every side, Father God, just uh, give you salon, word, Father God, to every, every country, every state and everywhere, Father God, to help them to understand your presence and your peace and your your words father god thanking mm -hmm. you upcoming time to submitting to your hand take care of every side father god thanking you almighty jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. all right thank you everyone thank you for being part of the class today i appreciate it have a good uh, weekend enjoy your time